Hello everyone, it's me again, and I can no brainer. Welcome to the Star Wars Destiny video. Season 6, top cut, best of 30, top 32, best of 3, starting now. And I'm up against a Snoke Thrawn. Uh, yeah, so, I, some of you may be coming here straight off of the uh, Smuggler's Den, in which I was part of the smug part of the late Smuggler's Den podcast with Tiny Grimes. Um, and I said I was going to destroy this guy because he's using vehicles. He's going snow snow thrown vehicles, and I this deck of mine uses a lot of retreats and hyperspace jumps. It's going to be great. It's not going to be great. This is actually going to be terrible. I will be very surprised if I win this one. Um, I do have suppressive fire, which is a decent early start, but I'm going to be spending the two resources on the starting. Um, weapon as first. I don't actually want hit and run as my very first. I want to draw those later so let me just um, shuffle those back in and uh, draw three here and uh, I get the hyperspace jump which kind of sucks uh, and the Mars's vault so he knows that I'm going to have uh, a hyperspace jump for the next turn because the problem is right Thrawn can just take all of those uh, action stopping car um, you know my hyperspace jumps and my retreats out of my hand um, and that worries me greatly. That worries me very greatly. On top of that, he has um, he has fallback as a card. Uh, fallback is cost four and allows both players to pick a. And he starts with a two already. Uh, and he's going to pull out a weapon from my hand at the start, uh, which sucks. So there we go. Um, and he's going to start with four extra resources here. Um, and that's going to suck heavily. Um, so already this is uh, going pretty terribly for me. Um, but yeah. That costs four and it allows him to remove all except one of my upgrades. And um, that's, that's, a, that's a big threat. A very, very big problem for me. I do get the rocket launcher at the start though. Rocket launcher is fantastic for breaking down his vehicles. Um, you know, maybe I can... Um, Maybe I can use Rocket Launcher to destroy all of his vehicles. Um, and, you know, with with that, maybe I can survive. The problem is he just makes so much money with Thrawn Snoke. As you saw, four resources. Like, four resources to me is the equivalent of, like, six damage off of one die. Uh, it really is quite something. Now, he did get the, the Disrupt side as well, which is going to really ruin um, this Rocket Launcher. Because I won't be able to, you know, resolve its base sides. But that's fine. I'll have to just deal with that uh, for this first turn. And then he probes and gets rid of the last two from my hand. So I've got no re-rolls here. Um, very smart play on his part there. And I'm just going to be left um, at his mercy, effectively. Um, this this needs re-rolling because it... Uh, and there we go. Double blanks. Perfect. Perfect to see. Uh, uh -huh. And he's going to pay two and get out his... Uh, First, gu first uh, vehicle, uh, two, two, a three. It's Arc 170. Very, very good vehicle. Uh, I'm going to take the bait and focus to a two range. Let's see if he has removal for that. Um, I need to just do a lot of damage here. If I can kill the Thrawn fast enough, well, killing the Snoke is decent because Snoke's a power action guy, and he rolls the three indirect, so he's going to be able to start with the maximum damage here. Um, Snoke, Snoke is the power action guy, so killing Snoke early might be good, uh, because um, he's get, he's obviously running Dark Ritual, which will allow him to heal Thrawn for six if Thrawn's dead, um, which is huge. Whereas with Snoke, it's rounded down, so he'd only heal five, uh, and that thin margin is kind of required here. So he's going to focus. He's going to get two more resources, and honestly, that triple folk, the 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 three. Indirect is kind of good, so he's probably... Okay, he's going to keep that. Um, and there we go. So this is going to be quite painful right from the get-go here. Um, but, yep, yeah, and I've got nothing to do, and he knows I've got nothing to do. And I'm giving him resources every turn as well because of Mars's Vault, because I need that so badly. Sudden Impact, okay, pays one. It allows him to do an extra point of damage uh, on me in total, and I only have 19 base health uh, versus his 23 uh, which makes this very, very troublesome, indeed. At least he does not have any knowledge of my hand uh, before we start this. But he's already at eight resources, which is very significant. I got a quick draw and hit and run. Um, that's interesting to say the least. 
Do I want to play both of these? I don't think I do. Um, I think I'd rather just quick draw this and see how that goes. Uh, so that's what I'll do. I'll quick draw out the hole that lasted for two. And uh, we will see if I can get off this rocket launcher to insta-kill. Although, if I destroy this thing, he gets to return it to his hand. So, rocket launcher is not even that good for this. But maybe, maybe I can get lucky and kill Thrawn. With my roll. And uh, five, that does not quite kill Thrawn, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. This is where, if I'd done that with Mars first, I could then have hit and run out the fin. Um, but, can't do that. But, let's roll out Mars. And I do get a focus. Um, which is going to let me go to another two. And then I guess resolve the... Do I want to resolve the two or the three? If I resolve the three, I don't get to easy pingers. But I'm okay with resolving the three. So I'll resolve the three. This threatens lethal on Thrawn already. Um, so if he wants to use Thrawn's ability now, he has to kill he has to kill me because the thing is he does not run removal in this deck he only runs um the um uh, heal to the revive and he runs pin down which only removes one die and overconfidence which allows him to reroll both and remove one neither of which are particularly great in this scenario and he does uh hit my hit and run uh, unfortunately for me um but i am going to be able to kill him um, yeah, uh, which means he's not going to be able to use the Snoke ability, but he's going to probe and he's going to hit my easy pickings and retreat, uh, which really sucks. I'm going to have to take the shield and I have lost half, I have lost half of my retreat hyperspace stuff, both my easy pickings and half of my, um, action cheating. So I, I did ha I did have managed to kill a Thrawn already. So if I can just keep doing that, that'll be great. But five resources there, sitting there, ready for that to dark ritual to heal him for six. Yep. And Thrawn comes back to life. Five costs, heal six. And there is nothing I can do about it. And there's nothing to stop me from doing other, from doing other stuff. However, I mean, that is five resources not spending on killing me right now. Um, but I mean, he does have a pistol, uh, and with the double focus, he's going to be able to do four into me, which is going to be deadly. Oh, he does not roll a focus. Okay. Well, he'll probably roll a focus again uh, with a reroll here. Uh, boundless. Okay. Boundless, of course, allows him to choose to draw a ton of cards. He's probably got the... That card he saved, so he's probably got the um, a Dark Ritual there. Chance Cube, he really doesn't need a Chance Cube, let's be honest here. He's going to be making so much money. And he's he can definitely afford to reroll these into four more damage. And then this is a significant amount of damage that's being dealt to me. Um, I mean, Mars is going to almost die. And that's just going to be Finn versus Snoke. Uh, plus, I guess Snoke's going to have a 5 cost heal 6. Uh, he did lose the overconfidence, so that's one piece of removal he's losing. Um, I assume he didn't want to re-roll the 2 indirect. Okay, he did then. For the focus, guarantee the focus time. Alright, so this isn't great for him. He did hit the 2 range there, though. Um, so he only needs to hit a 1 focus or a 2 focus. To get that work. In fact, he's just taking the resource. Alright. Uh, 2 range onto Finn, sure. Um, eight and seven. Yeah, I don't want Mars to go to six here because uh, six is kill range from, in my opinion. I think if he gets down another vehicle, so let's draw five more cards. All right, Rex's blaster is great here. Um, it allows me to roll out the Mars and the Finn. Um, and then I still have defensive position left over. The question is, do I want to put this on Finn or do I want to put this on Mars? Um, they're both at seven. So if I put this on Finn, though, he is such a big target. If I put this on Mars, oh, that's not too bad. I mean, he might have uh, f he might have uh, fallback here, which would be a devastating blow for me. Um, we're gonna try it anyway. We're gonna put the right blaster onto Mars. 
Uh, nope. Nope. And there we go. I don't know why I have these two random vehicle dice in there, but I do, and I shouldn't do. Alright, so now if he pays four for the fallback, he now gets to remove that and my hold that blaster. So he gets to spend four to remove four of me. Um, he only has one in the deck though, but that is the one he found. He's finding everything he needs. Yeah. I called it. I called it. I really called it, but nothing I can do. There. If I roll a four on this rocket launcher, I'm still good. Otherwise, I've got a big problem. I've got a big problem. And then he's going to pay one to overconfidence. Yep. Problem is, his deck is very consistent because of Boundless. Um, which is, of course, a huge problem for me. Uh, so let's roll out Mars. I might need to retreat uh, soon. That was bad. That was really bad. Alright, well, I'm going to take two resources here to go up to three and hope he calls three on the hyperspace and then I can retreat. And that's how you get baited. He's going to be able to take four resources at the end of this turn, though, um, which absolutely sucks. But I will be able to retreat. Uh, I kind of want to use the long term plan first. Uh, to shoot him for three. Or get another plus one. I think this game is going to be too fast. I think I do need to shoot for three here. He hasn't got another probe, so... This isn't too bad here. If he rolls out Snoke, he can't chance cube. If he uses Snoke's ability, I'll be able to just retreat anyway. Um, so if he's wanting to use Snoke's ability here, he, he has to waste the turn either way. Which is a really big problem for him, and that's why I was able to do the ordering that I managed to do. And he knows that, because he has absolutely nothing he can do if I retreat. Alright, he's going to pull back the chance cube. He's hoping to draw another resource here or something. Um, just so that I don't keep stalling him out. Um, okay, so if I take... If I defensive position now, he's got very little. Um, but he can re-roll into things. It's going to be one of the best defense positions I can do. Otherwise, I retreat here, and he still manages to take the two resources to four. If I retreat, he can focus to... If I don't retreat, he can focus to five resources instead of four, and that means Thrawn doesn't die. Um, but if I resolve... If I... I don't think it's worth it for the rocket, just for the rocket launcher here. I mean, if the rocket launcher hits a three or a four, Thrawn dies again. Um, or if, if rocket launcher hits a three or a four... If a rocket launcher hits anything that isn't a blank, um, he has to resolve the four resources then, and then I can put it into Snoke. But then he can roll out uh, to the two or the three, and then I've got a retreat. Alternatively, I then defensive position. Um, I think that is safe. I think then that discarding the suppressive fire is the best choice uh, for this 66% chance. I've got to take these risks. All right, this is a kill on Thrawn here. So he's going to resolve that. He's going to get throw resources and take a damage point, uh, which then lets me throw three into Snoke. And from here, if he focuses, he still gets to take another two resources and go up to nine by the end of this turn. Uh, or he rolls out the this guy and hopes for the 50-50. Alternatively, um, Snoke does have a two indirect. He can just go for two indirect and just take it. Uh, but then I do defensive position. And I hold off on things. No need to use up the retreat if I don't need to, after all. Okay, so he's only going to take one resource off of this. But he does that to avoid the defensive position. Now, he can claim. Nope, ambush actions do not count. Don't know what he ha would have for ambushing. Okay, he just takes the one resource. 
Um, okay. Uh, do I want to keep this X8? I think I do. And draw three. Alright, here's a hit and run. Here's a grand entrance. And I did get a dug in as well. This makes things very interesting because I can grand entrance the fin out. Um, or I can hit and run and guarantee kill the throne. Uh, pretty much guarantee kill the throne. Uh, and I think that's what I'll do. I think I will pretty much guarantee kill the throne. Yeah. Um, and then hit and run. Right, fin. Grand entrance is not going to be so great for me, unfortunately, um, because I don't have a Rex's blaster on Mars. All right. Um, well, that's that's the hit and run, I guess. I can still roll at Mars, and I can still go ahead and uh, kill this throne. All right, so I can, um, yeah, I can kill kill the throne and then take a resource on the Mars. Although he's almost certainly going to heal Thrawn for six, but this means he doesn't pull anything out of my hand. Um, so I get to do some re-rolling. Which is exactly what I will do. Okay, that's why he had the ambush action for the Fang Fighter. All right, he's wasting time on this chance cube though. Time I don't think he actually know he actually has. So let's re-roll and let's re-roll. Everything? Everything. Let's go for this Snoke as much as possible here. Alright, so uh, that's one damage. That's three damage. Um, three plus two is five. So this is lethal on Finn over two actions here. So he needs to use his uh, other five to heal up the throne again. Mm -hmm. Now, if I focus this to the three, I do get six out of this. Um, nope. If I use long-term planning on this, it becomes a triple focus. I can focus to the three indirect here and the one ranged. Uh, six, he has... Um, he has 12 health, and I could go to seven, seven damage. But I think leaving this as a one is fine, honestly. Um, I think taking the extra resource for the dug-in is also fine. Um, so I'm not going to be re-rolling here then. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's... Let's uh, long-term plan for five indirect. And this puts them both within heavy kill range for next turn. If I manage to draw my last quick draw. And something to quit draw with. Alright, that roll of resource, that's not very good for him. Um, yep, yeah, let's uh, fin here and let's put it on the throne here. Because this will leave Snoke with two hit points for the rocket launcher uh, kill, potentially. Alright, neither of these have managed to roll um, for the defensive position here, so. I'm going to take the resource here, and if he ends up resolving that discard, that's fine by me. Um, and if he's he's got one one roll left, um, he's got two re rolls if he pulls up the chance cube, and he does have the double focus on Snoke. Well, he's just wasting actions with this chance cube, which is going out really going really well for me. A single resource, so this did not go very well for him. So let's dug in now. And if he wants to resolve that last as a discard, that is perfectly fine perfectly fine by me here because that's three damage he's not doing to me. And that means I'm not dead. <laughs> I'm not losing anyone this turn. Oh, I guess I wasn't going to lose anyone either way. But now, I've managed to do a lot of damage. This is a lot more damage than I was expecting the deck to be able to throw out. This rocket launcher has certainly been effective, but I only have one of them in the deck, so... I forgot it was my turn. Alright, he's going to discard and reroll. There's his double focus, so he can go to 5 damage in total. He doesn't have any out of hand damage, so 
I can afford to put this uh, Mars down a bit to four. And then I have a hyperspace jump. I have the hyperspace jump. That is interesting. Um, with Grand Entrance, I will force him to have to respond to me, though. So let's Grand Entrance here to roll in Finn. And this will force a response from him. And depending on how this goes, I can then hyper jump, space jump away and he won't be able to throw and remove my dice. All right. Um, shit, I basically want to keep all of this. <laughs> Well, let's just keep rerolling this one. Alright, go ahead. That is a kill on both with that six indirect. Uh, GG. Alright, I, I managed to manage the throw very effectively with the very early kill. <laughs> Double mind trick pinned down. There's the Force Illusions coming out. You see, this is the sort of stuff I'm afraid of. Planetary Bombardment, Force Illusion. <laughs> The other sudden impact. Well, I'm going to show you my double logistics. Alright. What was the last seven cards in my deck? Um, yeah, just the one quick draw, the Brexus Blaster, the DL44s, yeah. He only runs the mind trick and he, he runs mind trick pinned down and overconfidence. I mean, that's six very good removal pieces, but. There we go. All right. Let's hope game two is uh, just as simple. Um, I think I might just outplay him. He wasn't res he wasn't respecting my severe heavy, my severe amount of speed. Um, and I managed to. I managed to, he did manage to heal, revive the throne twice, but he didn't have the resources to continue the assault very well. Uh, he didn't manage to get anything out because I killed the throne so early. And then I was, because they comes back exhausted, I was able to manage the throne very effectively. Whoops, I'm used to having three resources. All right, and he gets to, of course, choose the battlefield, so he's probably going to choose his. Um, so with that in mind, the dug-in is not a good start here. The Mars's Vault is definitely good. Holdout Blaster can work. He's going to be able to do something. He's going to be calling two, most probably. Um, in which case, the DL44 is not great here. I don't want the hit and run, definitely. The DL44 is fine for if he does resolve a two, though, because then I can always get a third, but I don't want to spend a... Th I'd rather not roll out Mars for a resource, is the thing. I'd rather get a second weapon. Okay, there we go. There's my double holdout Buster X8. There are my weapons. Oh, wait. He gets to... He gets to choose because it was his because he lost. Alright. I I don't know why I'm putting one shield on both of them, but I am. It's it's not a good it's not a good habit. It really isn't. Alright. Oh my god. Ouch. I was hoping you'd call two so that at least I'd get rid of those. That's why Thrawn is an after effect so that you can get rid of the easy pickings. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's that that sucks for me, um, unfortunately. But honestly, the difference between X8 and the holdout is not very big. But I will use the X8 here. Yeah, that's super risky there. All right, and I get two resources out of that. That's not great, but I can do some holdout blaster ramping, I guess. He's gonna spend a resource to immediately for solution the thrown out. That I, I I understand completely why. Let's roll out the Mars. Let's uh, get nothing on the Mars. Great. Okay. Well, I'll take my two resources here. And he's gonna be able to do a lot here with all of these resources. But I am going to be able to Mars' Vault. There comes the Z95. I'll play the other Holdout Blaster. 
Then I will discard and reroll. All right, I hit a one range, one indirect. That's what I want to see. What three indirect? Sorry, that's what I want to see. All right, and he gets out the other vehicle. So already he has more ramp out than he had at the start. Um, which of course is bad, bad, bad news for me. Uh, all right, yeah, I will gladly resolve three indirect. Looks like he's putting it all into Snoke, which makes perfect sense. But Snoke's now on eight. Uh, that is um, technically, uh, if I god roll, a hit and run kill. All right, that's a three for one. That's a big problem for me. Um, that's long term planning. A two ranged. All right, let's put a ranged into the Thrawn. Just keep peppering both sides a bit here. Um, as long as they're both weak, it weakens his ability to revive me and to, to revive. And then he's gonna do five to me, and this is gonna hurt significantly. He's even discarding a dark ritual here to boundless. Oh wow. Okay. He is looking for vehicles badly, or a chance cube. That makes sense. He's boundless for a chance cube so that he can get stuff out on th on the Snoke. That makes a lot of sense. Um, he lost a dark embrace for it though. But I mean this is this is the turn he goes completely off on a beautiful turn one. Uh he hits a two he hits a two base there, um, but he doesn't hit a um double focus there. Fortunately with Mars's vault, like it mitigates the difference in resources between the two of us. Um him getting five him getting six resources a per, per turn versus my two is much more significant than him getting seven and me getting three. Um, he's probably going to discard the DL44, discard to reroll the DL44 and the Snokes at the very least. I I would assume. Um, keep the two indirect probably. Um, okay, now he's going to reroll that as well. He wants this focus badly. He doesn't get it again. That's good for me. He he discards the other boundless. So, oh, he discards the other revive. Okay, so he's going all out with this dark ritual, and he gets the double focus. All right. And with that double focus, he is going to be able to go into maximum damage. Because 9 damage is incredibly significant. If he wants to do 7 to Mars, he can do 7 to Mars here. Because Jesus Christ, he has gone so hard in this first turn. Whew. Okay, that hurt a lot. In one turn, he's already done more than he did in that entire last game. Alright. Ooh, and I do not draw into anything fantastic here. No action cheating. This is a big problem for me. I might have to just retreat, uh, but I can fake out the three call on this Thrawn at least. And uh, that's six. That's not insignificant. Okay, he's going to mind trick. That makes sense. All right, so I'm going to put the three here and the... Um, hmm. If I move a plus two over here, he's definitely going to pick that side and I only get to do three to him. Um, but if I move both plus twos here, I can always roll out Mars for this. I would want to keep the three indirect is the thing. So let's, let's do it like that. Let's do it like that. Three indirect versus five direct. Okay. And he chooses the five direct. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I could long-term plan out that three for a four instead, but I'm not going to. And I get a focus, double focus. All right. Well, let's uh, focus to the... Range side, honestly, and uh, do a three indirect. And there we go. That's that's another bit of damage. Now he's almost certainly going to call three. He's going to hit the DL forty four. And he's going to hit the DL44, but he's not going to hit the other things, and that's what matters here. I should have gone to the resource, actually. Then I could have played the X8 and still retreated. Um, oh, well. 
Um, hmm. If he has a probe, that could it could be very risky for me to do a retreat here. Uh, oh, he can Snoke and remove all three of my resources, actually. Um, so it's it's important for me to retreat right now. And he'll be able to still take three shields off of this. Oh, that hurts. But if I'd been... I mean, I could have long-term planned. But that would have been a bad thing. Let's discard this ground entrance. Let's discard this defensive position. I don't want to give him knowledge over me here. Let's draw. Alright, I get hit and run. I get hyperspace. Uh, okay. He just got both sudden impacts. He's looking for removal, I assume. And uh, vehicles, yeah. Alright, good to know. Um, so I can play an X8 and then hit and run on the fin here. I think hit and running the fin first is what's important here. If I play the X8, that will um, that might fake him into thinking I've got I've not got the hyperspace. All right, so I get three damage here. Uh, I'm gonna re-roll this because that that was cocked. All right, so I get three damage there. Um, let's play the X8. Let's fake him out a bit with this hyperspace jump. I think. I think that's the correct call of action. is to be faking out as much as possible. And let's roll in Mars, and let's give him something he needs to remove, hopefully. Alright, another one in plus two. That's That looks great to me. Um, so let's go ahead and do the three the three indirect. Um, unfortunately, I would have liked to have rolled a resource here, um, but I will take the shield, I guess, onto Finn. He gets to call the two, so I faked him out on the retreat side of things. Um, and he rolls double disrupt, so, well then. Alright, well, five is enough to kill, um, the Snoke. I faked him out on the retreat. Um, sorry, do I need five or do I need six? I need six, right? So, six kills Snoke, and he has no revive for it. I'm faking him out very effectively here. To be fair, if he hadn't have put all three in direct onto the throne there, that would have been fine for him. Um, so yeah, let's long term plan. Oh wait, no, he's he can roll in first. Um, yeah, let's actually dug in first then. Uh. The thing is, he's going to hope for the enough damage to one-shot Finn. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to provide that effectively. Um, so yeah, let's dug in for now, actually, first. Instead of trying to focus into raw resources because Thrawn's ability. Because Thrawn's got two um, disrupt size showing. And then let's long-term planning. I can suppressive fire him. Uh, I can play suppressive fire so that next turn I, I can suppressive fire him. And he can no longer spot yet spot blue for his mind tricks and overconfidences. So he's hit the double focus. So at this point, he can do the seven um, damage. Yeah, I'll just claim. At this point, he can do the seven damage and take two resources. These two resources might get him another vehicle. I'm surprised at how few vehicles he's honestly had. His deck is just full of vehicles. So one, two, three, and then three, eleven, which does kill Finn. So at this point, um, I'm stuck with just a Mars. Um, but Mars is strong. And three does game another vehicle. All right. I'm surprised he didn't try this for earlier because special is good. And special would have allowed him to remove four, would allow him to do effectively four damage. And he has double, double force illusion. Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, I can roll out Mars and force him to call three at least. Uh, with this, there's nothing to lose by keeping the hyperspace jump in hand. 
Let's do that then. Uh, Rex's blaster pistol is at least another gun to use. Um, and by calling that, he is going to be forced to get hit by easy pickings eventually, potentially. But I, I'm I'm very scared for my chances at this point. Uh, he's he's managing to uh, tank up like crazy for um, with this throw. And that's too ranged, and that's gonna hurt. And I rolled garbage. Sounds good to me. All right, let's take this resource here, and uh, then let's do a damage. <laughs> yep. And then I'm gonna lose the hyperspace jump, and then be stuck on these. Which isn't great to see, honestly. Um, so yeah, I'm going to discard this other Rex Blaster. Uh, actually, I should, probably should hit that focus. Actually, um, I should hit that focus side first. I'm going to actually use Suppressive Fire and hit the focus. And then I'm going to discard and reroll. Oh yeah. Pay the resource. And then I'm going to discard and reroll these. No, that's annoying. Don't hit it again. I can always pay one to hit to turn this to the three. Uh huh. And I'm going to have to pay one to turn this to the three. Pay one to turn it to the three. And then he, I'm going to force him to basically double force illusion. Uh, well, he, he he only needs to do a single force illusion here. But yeah, let's uh, just do three. There goes his fallback. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. But Jesus Christ, this is very likely going to be lethal against me. Um, so let's do that. Okay. Alright, that's a three. That's a six. Yep, this is almost certainly game. Unfortunately. He has four rerolls in hand for this. He just went off on turn one so hard. The correct course of action here is to just reroll those two, and then if you hit a two or a three on that thing, you win. It's interesting how much easier it was for me to do damage last round than this one. Alright, and there we go, that's game. Alright, and this is why I am so absolutely terrified of his deck. He used up both of his super heals. All to just... So that he could get out four vehicles with four vehicles, that was more than enough to kill me. Because I do not have any... Um, well, I do have some removal, but I don't have any uh, health. Which is a problem. And uh, this is unfortunate, because my baiting strategies might not work out this time. I had two times where I could bait him out very effectively. Uh, and I can't do that now. Unless maybe I do some reverse psychology and make him think I'm baiting him, <laughs> but that that doesn't work out so well. But I'll be able to throw some waste at least and start off with the battlefield. But I got Mars's vault twice in the opening as well, which was huge, and um, I get it again. Wow. Okay. Cool. Well, I will definitely keep the Mars's vault and the holdout blasters. Um, not the easy pickings or hit and run though. He's swapping around which way around his Thrawn and Thrawn and Snoke is just to confuse me. Uh, we'll see how effective that is. Um, okay, so I can quick draw instantly if I wanted to. Um, that does not seem like a very... Oh wait, I get to choose. 
Oh, I'm definitely picking mine. Letting him take the shields, which puts him to 25 health, but I get to remove his... I get to remove his dice, which is a big point. Um, alright, so let's just hold out Blaster here. Could put it on Mars, try and get out two more resources. But I don't think that's wise. I think it's better just put this on Finn. I, I don't want to use this quick draw so early. It's, it's just so unnecessary in the opening to use the quick draw. Alright, well, that's four. Um, but I can't afford to resolve it. Uh, he's going to call zero, so he's going to be able to hit the Mars' vault, which really sucks for me. Um, now, if he thinks... He hits the double resource side as well. If he thinks the quick draw is more of a threat, that's brilliant for me, because Mars' vault is definitely the problem here. Okay. That's really good for me, then. Alright, so let's roll out Mars. I hit double focus, which is interesting. Um, well, that allows me to go to a... I guess a... Do I want to go to a three or a two here? Um... I guess I'll go to a 2 here, and I'll swap this out for a plus 2 instead, or a 1. Swap it out for a plus 2, I could get overconfidenced. But I mean, I'll take the risk. There's no other thing that could scare me here. If he mind tricks, that costs him 2 to remove 1 die from a mind trick. Alright, so I still get to do two damage. Um, yeah, I'll definitely be doing this to the throne. Pity I, wouldn't, I wasn't able to dug in, but... Oh well. He gets four resources. And I get to long-term planning. Here's hoping he doesn't pop off like he did that first round. All right. Well, the correct course of action for him here is probably that is probably to um, roll in Snoke and then use and then he can use the double focus uh, once I place down the Mars's vault. Um, that way, I can't just remove one of his focus sides. Uh, he's not taking an action here. Okay, he's gonna roll out the fine fighter instead. Alright. Makes sense. Okay, here's a single focus side there. That's not a double focus, so that's good for me. Uh, so yeah, I claim. I remove that die. Kind of really want to keep this dug in. Um... I need the health. Ah, shit. Alright, so he's already got two vehicles out. But it doesn't land on the good side, and he's not going to reroll. Okay. He knows that this is a dug in, though. I think it's worth keeping it though. Alright, so I draw a Rexus and I draw a Hyperspace. And I draw my Rocket Launcher. And the Rocket Launcher has saved me last time. But I think the Rexus is too big of a deal. He, if he calls three, he's going to be hitting the Hyperspace jump instead. So, um... It's probably worth putting it on the Mars instead of the Finn because Mars has more health. So let's uh, pull this one out from the back, bottom of the deck again. It doesn't matter which character this really goes on. It really just makes the hit and run things a bit more awkward. But in exchange, I keep this one on Mars. Yep. Pay two for it. What does he call? Because I haven't given him any sign. He knows he can call one to hit the Duggan. Um, but other than that, well, he doesn't roll anything good there. 
He calls the one to hit the dog in. But I now have a hyperspace and a rocket launcher. Still. Alright, so let's roll out Mars. And I'm finally going to be able to use this Rex's blaster to speed my games up. Which allows me, of course, to roll out Finn. Because I own the battlefield. That allows me to resolve six indirect if I wish. Oh, I wished I had got another sheet, another resource actually there. Uh, because then I could have uh, threatened the hyperspace jump very effectively. Um, I can long term plan that uh, resource side though. So let's resolve six. Honestly, long-term planning this is not too big, not too much of a problem. But I mean, I will rather, I would rather use my focus first. Okay, he's gonna pay one. He's gonna play a pistol. All right, this gives me time then to um, go to resource sites. He hits the disrupt. That sucks for me. Um, this means I'm gonna have to use up the long-term planning as a resource side. Um, he's going to be able to double focus as well. So. I'm going to have to use this as this in order to have the resources to hyperspace here. And with long term used up, that's mission accomplished for him. So he can go ahead and resolve and resolve that double focus as to uh, to go to Thrawn's four resources if he wants to. But I mean, then I would hyperspace jump. So at this point, it's just a case of what does he want to do before he hyperspace jumps? Um, I'm going to get greedy here and take another resource. Let him play another force solution if he really wants to. Alright, I'm almost certainly just going to hyperspace jump out of here now. So let's jump. I mean, he did just use up his turn doing that. Alright, let's draw four. Alright, I get a quick draw on my DL44. That's pretty huge. Uh, or I can quick draw on the X8. Um, suppressive fire opening isn't too terrible either. Uh, I could play the rocket launcher. Uh, quick draw an X8 over my holdout if I had to. Play a rocket launcher on the Mars. Uh, would do some serious work. Well, the DL44 just does a lot of damage on its own. Um, I think with Suppressive Fire, though, I could definitely see... I could definitely remove both of Thrawn's dice here, and that could be quite effective. So let's, let's play the Suppressive Fire here. Now he can call three because he knows I have a DL44. I have a rocket launcher in hand. But he's going to call two. He's going to pull out the X8 because uh, he's looking for retreat. Which makes sense. Alright, well, I'm still going to be able to DL44 one of his dice away. Um. Question is, who do I want to put it on? Do I want to put it on Finn, who has Finn or Maz? They both have the same health. Maz gives me more advantage in the future, but Finn has the hit and run potential. Let's put it on the Finn. Uh, I'd rather have the rocket launcher on the Mars. So let's quick draw out the DL44, force him to remove one of his dice. And then I get to roll out Finn. Uh, this does not mean I get to roll out Mars, though, as a result. Um, but I can roll out Mars later if I don't like these roll, this roll. Uh, but I kind of really do like this roll, so... Um, yeah, if I put five into him right there, that puts him on two, and that is a Mar that is a kill if Mars activates. Uh, but he has four resources. He is set up, ready for uh, resolving stuff as Snoke. Okay, he four solutions. That is perfectly fair. Perfectly fair. But now I get to roll up Mars. I hit the two indirect. Um, hmm. 
I'd rather have that been two damage, but I won't look a gift horse in the mouth in the mouth here. Um, if I turn Finn to two damage and take the two indirect, that at least forces the force illusion from Snoke. Uh, Yeah, let's go to the two ma two range here, and let's uh, let's uh, force that on Snoke, because otherwise he's going to resolve the um, yeah, because otherwise he's going to resolve the two one of the two indirects on Snoke, and that's that's just a mistake for me. All right, and he loses a boundless. That's good to see. He is going to be able to use Snoke to, on this Thrawn die though to focus three, and that terrifies me. It may have been a big mistake to leave that suppressive fire out there at the time. Um, do I suppressive fire one of these dice? I think I will. I think I will suppressive fire that, that that resource side. Yep. Stop him going to four, which could do a pin down play. Uh, nope. It's my turn. It's my turn. Suppressive fire is not an action. Alright, so let's resolve uh, two indirect there. I might need to use long term planning on this double shield side, which would suck. I kind of want to use long term planning. Um, I don't mind not using long term planning for now. The, the problem's going to. Okay, he's going to leave that as a blank because that's what he rolled. That's fair. I get to I would get to remove his um yeah that's long term plan for now. I'd get to remove his um, focus side if I claimed, which is going to threaten him to use the focus side immediately. But that does still put him to five, which is a very scary number. As soon as he rerolls that thrown into a two resource, though, I have no choice but to get rid of it. Okay, so he's going to use it as a triple focus. Makes complete sense. And he has one character dice left, so this would... Okay, okay, that's that's perfectly fine by me, um, because this allows me to resolve my shield and resource and stuff. So let's resolve this shield. Ah, but now he can do a single focus if you really wanted to, just to fo focus the Z95. Um, to a three side. That would be a problem for me. That would be a real problem for me. I mean, it's going to be a problem for me as it is. But... Do I not take the resource here? He has four rerolls. The chances of him hitting what he wants to hit on this anyway is pretty high. Or hitting a two or a one, so yeah. I'll just take the resource. I'll let him use the double focus. Do I play the rocket launcher over the Rex? No, I just claim. Okay, he had something for two. He had the other Z95 for two. All right. That's this is what I'm afraid of. He's already got eight, which kills Mars, and this for any more kills Finn. Okay. He takes the resource again. And he's going to boundless for one. So that way, okay, by boundlessing, he gets to look, search for his, I don't know, chance cube, resources. He really wants that pinned down, and he's probably going to get it. Uh, he's going to pay one. He's going to probably kill Mars. Yep, he kills Mars. Lose the Rexes, but a good hit hit and run play here will win me the game. Um, well, it won't win me the game actually. Uh, Finn is definitely worth is definitely very likely to die here. He discards the fallback. Okay, never mind then. I should be in a lot better position. Um, oh, that was four resources, not three. Um, uh. Do I discard the rocket launcher? The rocket launcher is so good, man. I'm, I'm not discarding the rocket launcher. Alright. 
Unfortunately, this hand is awful. Um, won't really be able to do anything with it at all. Other than threaten things with the grand entrance, like this is a really bad dead hand. Uh, I could have drawn a lot of good stuff. I have one more quick draw and two hit and runs here, along with some better pistols, hyperspace jump, retreats. Um, this is really bad for me. Uh, so let's... Let's just rocket launch it for three, I guess. But then I won't be able to resolve it because of grand entrance. So I need to override the holdout blaster for this. Yeah, I need to override the holdout blaster for this. Uh, this is going to be a pretty dead turn for me, which is going to probably win him the game, unfortunately. Um... That's just how this is going to go, without having the hit and run to like do some stuff and then frozen waste him very quickly. Going to have a real problem. Okay, with Grand Entrance I can at least cause some mayhem. He hits a shield, um, so that allows him to use, Snoke's to use his power action with Snoke. So, let's uh, Grand Entrance then. Let's uh, get Maximum everything. Alright. Roll one. Uh, I'm okay with the rocket launcher being... I'd rather it be a two for both, to hit both. Okay. Okay. And then we'll just re-roll these two. Oh, really? Mmm. That really sucks. I had a plus two there, but then I had two rerolls, and I thought I could go for something better. Ouch. Oh, and he gets to remove both of them, remove one of them as well, and reroll the other. That sucks for me. The four. The four isn't good because of the. Because of the Force Illusion. I kind of really want the one hit point. Uh, on Finn. At the moment. He can do a lot of damage to me. But he can do a maximum of 9 with his uh, stuff. And that's exactly how much health I have on Finn. But I think with the DL... The DL... The DH-17 is kind of mostly a non-issue. Uh, mm, no, the problem... The problem there is that he still has not used up his pin downs. I need to kill this Snoke off now. I need to kill Snoke now. Unfortunately, that's, that's what I have to do. And then he can do some double focusing. I can uh, take that healing point, at least. Puts me on 10. But now he can double focus, and so now I have to remove that. But then I don't get to long-term planning. If I get to long- if I long-term planning, I can hit him for a lot. And force that force illusion to go away. And force the force illusion to go away with a 5. Alright, he hits the logistics, and the other one's a Mars as well. But I can, force, I can hit him with 5 for the Force Illusion. He has to take it. I was hoping that he would eventually go to below 5 on that, but no. Alright, he loses a pin down, overconfidence, chance cube, and a revive. He might have another revive, though. But now he can do the double focusing and get to what he needs to go for this kill, potentially. Well, no, he can only do a maximum of 9, and I have 10 health. He would have to play another card. I don't think he has another card to play. But then it just comes down to me drawing a hit and run. Gonna resolve the six without even looking at what he's got. Mm. 
And then he's not really going to discuss. Oh, no, he's taking the resource. Okay. All right, I need to draw this hit and run and win. I get the hit and run. All right. DL44 comes down. Hit and run comes out. Let's hit a three side for the long term planning win. Are you kidding me? All right, well, let's discard this logistics and go for it again. All right, that's a single three side. He has to remove that one side. He d but he gets to fucking heal. For five. Forgive my language. Don't forgive my language. Um, okay. So, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That does kill. At least he won't be able to activate Snoke. So yeah, I will kill him. Now I've got to re-roll more and hope I survive. Um, if I defense a position and hit two dice, I'm fine. Let's discard this defensive position. Let's keep this two ranged. Let's re-roll these. Four. Four kills. Phew. Last card here. There's the other X's, there's the retreat, there's the X8, there's the hyperspace jump one, there's the grand entrance, there's the other retreat, there's the hit and run, and there's the suppressive. Whew, that was close. That was really close. Long term planning for two. <laughs> Huge, man. Uh. I was just drawing, not running. Drawing my efficiency cards instead of my action cheating, which was good here. Surprised you didn't keep fallback, though. Uh, game one, the chance cubes probably lost it for you. But you also did very little except to heal a bunch game two though man that first turn hurt mm. yeah he let Snoke die by going to three the three indirect that and then he was just so focused on removing my hyperspace jump that didn't exist or it was the retreat that didn't exist one of the two well I gave I gave him worms and he kept fighting on him but game three man this game three was terrifying because he can one shot my characters pretty much um so yeah i think you could have handled it better Assuming I always had a retreat or a hyperspace. Uh, I don't know anything specific, but I think you could have quenched your turns better so that if I did retreat, you had something strong to do still. Like, I, the thing is, though, if he does call two every time and if he doesn't hit the retreat, he's still very likely to hit a pistol, um, which is required for quick draw, right? Um, but um, the hyperspace jump is what's really threatening. The retreat's not as threatening because he still gets a turn to at least get for, for, for some resources. Thanks. I was about to type you two, but you know... 
good luck in season seven. Because season seven is now a thing and it's now starting. So, yeah. Uh, it's been me against I9 and IK No Brain. I really didn't think I'd handle that for as well as I did. Me against I9 and IK No Brain. Thank you for watching. Signing out.